It's time to learn stuff while punching crime in the face. Hey, what's happening gamers? I'm K-Wing, and this is Arkham Wednesday, the show where everything you know about Batman, you learned from me. Sounds shallow, but it's true. I hope you all had a fantastic new year. Me, I've been fighting bronchitis and losing. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I'm taking like this weird bubblegum syrup stuff that makes me feel like I'm 11 again. Anyway, today's topic is one of the most important members of the Bat family. That's right, it's time to learn about good old Alfred Theodos Crane Pennyworth. Before we get into his background though, let's talk about his roles in the Arkham games. Arkham Origins was the first time players can actually interact with Al, you know, in person. Well, in the game. He speaks to the player the entire time, offering both insight and classy humor. He keeps track of the assassins you defeated too. He's also terrified of a giant or king bat in the Batcave, and the interaction between him and Bruce is hilarious during that part. He alerts you to various side quests that uh, pop up during the game, and he's responsible for creating a cure for Miley's poison attack when Batman gets bit. When the Pioneer Bridge is attacked, Alfred assists Bruce in locating the bombs and saving the hostages. He also convinces Bruce to make allies and friends with Gotham's police department, namely uh, Sergeant Gordon. Alfred is also targeted by Bane and nearly killed in the game. Although thanks to the Electrocutioner's gauntlets, Bruce is able to save his father figure. Alfred then gets right back to work helping you break into Blackgate Prison. I really love how Alfred was portrayed in the game though. They really nailed his characterization, even without Deanie's assistance. As the Christmas Eve event goes on, the players see Alfred go from this punny butler to a father figure that won't allow his son to face the assassins. He even tries to stop Bruce at a point. My favorite quote from Origin is, you're not some hardened vigilante. You're a young man with a trust fund and too much anger. You're in over your head and I don't want this to be your end. Of course, uh, later on, Alfred does apologize for his actions, realizing that Batman is very important to Gotham and that, you know, Bruce needs to use this identity right now. So it was pretty cool how that worked out. In the Mr. Freeze DLC, Alfred is shown trying to attack some thugs in the hallway. I really wish they could have let the butler shine a little bit and beat those guys down, but he gets KO'd by a potted plant. So it's kind of like... Poor Al. Later in this video, you'll learn that Alfred is actually a highly skilled fighter, or at least was in his glory days. Still seeing Alfred stand up to the armed goons was pretty funny in Wayne Manor. After Alfred is uh, saved by Bruce, he's later seen helping the guests that have survived Mr. Freeze and assist Batman by radio a little bit. Alfred also gets taken hostage and Batman has to save him, and then running into Freeze, Bruce leaves and Alfred goes back to the Batcave after the guests escape. Alfred then remains in the Batcave for the rest of the DLC, where he once again guides the player through, you know, the event. Along with uh, sending the extreme environmental suit to Batman as well, which is an awesome suit that still makes Batman look like Darth Vader. It even has the glowing orange stuff. Anyway, Catwoman for the most part takes over Alfred and Oracle's role in Blackgate. I mean, Oracle wasn't around yet, but you know what I mean. She tells the player what to do. As for the very first game by Rocksteady, Arkham Asylum, Alfred has no role whatsoever. His biography can be found in the medical facility, though, once you scan some plate. And according to his profile, Alfred has black hair, he's a trained emergency surgeon, proficient with computer and mechanical systems, expert in domestic sciences, and he's a skilled actor in Master of Disguise. It should be noted, while Alfred has black hair, and other characters have different appearances in City and Origins, etc., Asylum was made before the continuity was established, and it was Deanie's way of paying tribute to Batman's rich history beforehand. With Arkham Origins taking a dump on all that timeline stuff though, certain Batman lore may not have happened at all though, outside of Nightfall which is mentioned by Bane in both Asylum and City. One could even argue that Asylum takes place on a different plane or reality or another Earth because Hush has been established, No Man's Land happened, and Death in the Family is referenced a couple times. Especially the Joker making fun of a Batman being without a sidekick. Anyway, back to Al. Alfred plays a minor role in Batman Assault on Arkham, which was that new movie that released uh, this summer, I believe, telling the Cape Crusader that Arkham is on yellow alert, and that's all he pretty much does. During uh, Arkham City, Alfred, for the most part, replaced Oracle's role, though she does return later in the game, like when you're getting near Roz or something. In the game, Alfred acts like Batman's sidekick, more or less. He drops in the Batsuit at the beginning of the game, he then sends in other gadgets when Bruce needs them, and also sends in Tim Drake, Robin, to check on Bruce in the field. Later in the game, when Talia is kidnapped by the Joker and Protocol 10 has been activated, Oracle's unable to convince Bruce to save Gotham, so Alfred tells Bruce, this is what you need to do. 
You need to focus on the citizens of Gotham and not worry about Talia right now because Gotham is priority. And Bruce, of course, listens to Alfred, and Talia is still later murdered by the Joker, so it didn't really matter. Uh, just the same. During the raid on Wonder Tower, Hugo sends his troops to Wayne Manor to kill Alfred. And Oracle alerts Nightwing to what's going on, who easily dispatches the Tiger Goons and saves Alfred. Now this story can be seen in the Arkham City comics and in the Nightwing Wayne Manor DLC for Arkham City. Kind of, though Nightwing has no speaking role. As of right now, I don't know what role Alfred will play in Arkham Knight. As far as we know, Oracle is the only one in communication with Batman and the Arkham Knight who will taunt him. Though, uh, during the comics leading to Arkham Knight, Alfred is still around, so there's always the possibility he could show up. With that said and done, it's time to learn about the different Alfreds. But more on that after a word from our sponsors. So, Alfred is more than just Batman's trusty butler and first appeared in 1943, though he wasn't called Alfred Pennyworth until 1955. The character was originally overweight, a bumbling, unshaven detective, and very cartoon-like. Kind of looked like uh, that guy Wimpy from Popeye. His name was also Alfred Beagle. And yes, he was a detective. Kind of. Or at least he wanted to be one. It wasn't until the movie serials where Alfred became a much younger, thinner, attractive looking dude. Not long after the Saturday matinee film stuff, DC Comics had Tubby Alfred hit the road and a new English chap took his place. The thin Alfred Pennyworth. Though his origin is a lot different than what you're familiar with, folks. Instead of being the Wayne family butler, Alfred was a former actor turned MI5 agent. On his father's deathbed, he was asked by his dad to continue the family tradition of being the Wayne family butler. Needing to lie low after World War II because of reasons, Alfred met Bruce and Dick where he became the butler for the manor, unaware that they were really Batman and Robin. For months or years, Alfred was said to valet for the duo, not realizing who they really were. One night, Alfred heard his name being called in the dead of night, all spooky-like, but Master Bruce and Richard were nowhere to be found. Arriving in front of the grandfather clock with a shotgun in hand, Alfred stumbled into the Batcave. Climbing up the stairs was Robin carrying a wounded Batman. After being startled for like a second, Robin took off his mask to reveal who he was and asked Alfred to help him. From then on, he became the butler to Batman and Robin as well, never telling a living soul who they really were. He stayed this way until DC killed him off in favor of introducing a mother figure, Dick Sant Harriet, who was a character set to appear in the upcoming Adam West show. Though something got mixed up with the show and Alfred had already been previously cast by a really famous guy. But uh, basically, both Aunt Harriet and Alfred would appear as the boys' caregivers. Which, yeah. So because of this slip-up, DC had to bring Alfred back to life in the comics a few months later, so you know they were having a major facepalm moment. He's revived as a villain, though, known as the Outsider now, which is a name that would later be used to describe Batman's own type of Justice League. Anyway, having survived his car accident, Alfred was experimented on by some lesser-known foe that nobody cares about, and Alfred became a bad guy. However, at the very end of the same issue where he makes his debut as a villain, he becomes good old Alfred again, like nothing ever happened. Basically, Batman and Robin turn him good again because of reasons, and he resumes his butler duties like it was nothing. By the 70s and up to until the Crisis event in 1985, Alfred would have a storyline where he meets his daughter, has more adventures with Batman and Robin, Robin goes off to college, and then after Flash saves the multiverse, everything gets rewritten, as does Alfred's past. So now, in post-crisis, Alfred has always been the Wayne's personal butler. He helped raise Bruce and assisted Batman from day one. Though Alfred's background still remains more or less the same, with a little bit of tweaking. He still worked for MI5, fought in World War II, and he's a trained surgeon. The post-crisis version of Alfred would later appear in Batman the Animated Series too, and he's my favorite. Though it's not until later in the series that people learn Alfred used to be a secret agent serving His Majesty. Robin even responds, I thought he was just this nice old guy that cleans stuff and baked me cookies. And Batman replies, he's cleaned up more than that in his time. To date, animated series Alfred is many people's favorite. I loved his role in Mask of the Phantasm as well, because whoever wrote the Arkham Origins game definitely borrowed a lot of this characterization for Alfred, because the personalities are nearly identical. So very spot on. Back to the comics though. During Batman Year One, Alfred assists the Dark Knight any way he can, though mostly patching up uh, Bruce's injuries, because, you know, he gets hurt a lot. 
He also helps Mr. Wayne fool Lieutenant Gordon into thinking Bruce is just his lazy billionaire playboy, uh, who hurt himself while, you know, on a skiing accident. Alfred also helps raise Dick Grayson and Jason Todd, and he feels a great loss when Jason dies in battle. When Tim Drake enters the picture in the late 80s, Alfred, along with Nightwing, tries to convince Bruce that Tim would make an excellent Robin and has a lot of potential. He refers to the young Drake as Master Timothy. Later, after Tim becomes Robin and Bane breaks the bat, Alfred takes Bruce to England and orders him not to put himself in harm's way anymore because, dude, you're paralyzed. You don't think. He then quits because Bruce doesn't listen to him and travels the world to find himself. Dick Grayson later tracks Alfred down and asks him to return to Gotham, which Alfred does. Because, you know, everybody listens to Dick Grayson. During No Man's Land, not long after Gotham is destroyed by an earthquake and Batman is presumed missing or dead, Alfred puts his spy training to use and works with the Bat family, telling them what to do. We also really get to see him shine as a medic and a fighter. Alfred has a great scene where he's taking on, like, this army of thugs, and even when Batman shows up, Bruce is pretty impressed that Alfred still has it. After Batman's defeated by Darkseid in Final Crisis, Alfred helps recreate the Outsiders and assists Gotham's newest Dark Knight, Dick Grayson. The interaction between Dick and Alfred is similar to Chris Nolan's uh, Batman trilogy. He also tries to tame Damien with Dick's assistance, but it doesn't go very well. Looking after the two sons of Batman is a full-time job, let me tell you that. As for the new 52, Alfred is pretty much, well, Alfred. Though he acts similar to the Beware of the Batman Alfred, minus, you know, not being bald. Alfred also, after the events of Forever Evil, is very sad and depressed most of the time. Especially after the death, or supposed death, of Dick Grayson, whom didn't die. In Nightwing number 30, Dick is shown alive and well in the Batcave, beating the tar out of Bruce, and Alfred is unable to get in the Batcave for some reason. Bruce says, oh, the elevator must be broken. No, it's because Nightwing threw Bruce through the elevator and broke it. So Alfred can't go down in the Batcave with snacks. There he would have seen Dick Grayson very much alive and, you know, would have turned his frown upside down, but nope, it doesn't happen that way. Basically, Batman and uh, Dick are fighting because Bruce tells them, you need to become a member of Spiral so we can protect our family's secret identities. And Dick's like, you crazy! I'm not going to become a secret agent. I want to be Nightwing again. I have to tell Barbara I'm alive. And Alfred, have you seen how messed up they are? What's wrong with you? Even though, you know, Dick wins the fight, uh, he still ends up becoming a secret agent, which bothers me. But uh, according to Future's End, Dick Grayson never becomes a superhero again, nor does Alfred, Barbara, or anybody learn that he's still alive, which really bothers me. So he's a secret agent now that kills people and then moves to Russia. No! <laughs> As for various Elseworld uh, Alfreds, well, they live to be in their 90s, and they still help Batman somehow. Especially after most of the Bat family leaves Bruce for reasons. Though both the Dark Knight Returns Alfred and Batman Beyond Alfred pass away, which is sad. Still Injustice Alfred is probably my favorite of the uh, various Elseworlds guys because he beats up Superman. How does he do it? Well, after Superman breaks Batman's back a la Bane, Alfred takes a Kryptonian pill and mops the floor with Superman by himself. That's what you call cleaning up, folks. He then escapes with Bruce before Superman can get his wits about him and be like, Dude, I just got beat up by a butler. In this universe, Alfred is shown to become Bruce's personal bodyguard. I'm pretty sure eventually this Alfred does die, though, because the Injustice Freedom Fighter Batman is alone in this universe, just working with Lex Luthor and uh, Deathstroke, fighting Superman's regime until the Batman from our universe and the Justice League arrive to stop evil Superman. The comics are still pretty cool, though, and I suggest you read them. Recently in Injustice Year 3, Nightwing returned to this universe as Dead Man. So that's pretty cool, though I wish he wasn't dead. Batman is also working with Constantine to take down Superman using magic. And he has to do this after the War of Green Lanterns failed. But more on that another time. In the movies, Alfred has been played by two guys named Michael. Michael Goff and Michael Caine. In the 1989 film, Michael Goff is shown to not really care too much about Batman's activities at all. In fact, he's more concerned about getting uh, Bruce married. He even lets Vicky Vale right into the Batcave, ignoring all protocol whatsoever thinking that Bruce needs a lady figure in order to move on from his parents' death. While probably true, 
Settling down would be the best thing for Bruce Wayne, Gotham really needs the Batman, especially Burton's Gotham. He returned as Alfred in Batman Returns and again mostly plays matchmaker for the movie between Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. He also discovers that both characters really care about one another and are exactly similar, split right down the center. He never really apologizes to Bruce for his past actions with Vicki Vale either. He's just kind of like, well, what I did, I did. So deal with it. That's how Alfred rolls. Alfred can also use the mechanical and computer equipment in the Batcave and assist Batman more than in the previous film. Now, when Schumacher took over, Goff does return for two films, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. In Batman Forever, Alfred acts like he does in the Arkham games. He kind of assists Batman on the radio a little bit, and he's working on the Bat computer, and that's about it. As for when uh, Dick Grayson comes into the picture, he promises that someday Robin will fly again. And Dick's like, what are you talking about, dude? And he's like, I'm not telling you. I'm secretly creating you a Robin suit out of different bat suits, but you're not going to find out until the end of the movie. Later in the film, he's in the cave when Dick steals the Batmobile after Robin sneaks into the Batcave. And Alfred's just kind of like, what are you doing? And Dick's like, hey, what's up? So he alerts Bruce that Grayson stole not the Jaguar, but the other car. And, you know, Bruce is like, which, which car is it? He's like, no, the other car, you fool! The Batmobile! Except he doesn't say Batmobile. And they show this scene with Robin in the Batmobile. It's funny, but, eh, whatever. His final role as Alfred is in Batman and Robin. Here, Al is dying from McGregor Syndrome, which is a disease that they made up for the film. But he's shown to work more in the Batcave as he's sick. He also has some touching scenes with Bruce, and he's trying to get his cousin Wilfred to come to the Waynes as the new butler and, of course, watch over the dynamic duo. It's been hinted that the butler Alfred is trying to reach, though, is not really family at all, but he's another British agent who's retired and working for some type of rich dude. He's just as skilled as Pennyworth, too, so he's a surgeon, master disguise, and great at, you know, dusting. Alfred's niece also accidentally discovers the Batcave, and like with Robin, Alfred suits her up, except it's computerized Alfred, so fake Alfred. Which, unlike the past film, doesn't make any sense at all, because why would there be a suit for her? I mean, Robin, it makes sense. Yeah, he came in, Alfred's like, you know, I'm gonna make you this, but Barbara, it's like, no, it makes no sense whatsoever, and it shows why this movie's just terrible. Now, at the end of the film, after he lives from Dr. Freeze, he has a cool line, though. He says, we're gonna need a bigger cave! And, you know, people laugh, and then everybody groans because they just wasted two hours of their life on this bad, bad, bad film. Now, Michael Caine took over as Alfred in the Nolan trilogy, picking up the Silver Tray of Justice, and brought a lot more to the role than Burton's butler, because there was more characterization than before. Like before, he also raised Bruce after his parents died, and he even told Bruce that it wasn't his fault that they died. It was the shooter, and the shooter alone. But even with these wise words of wisdom, Bruce still ignores Alfred, and is seeking revenge to kill the guy who killed his parents. Then once the dude is killed, leaves Gotham for seven years without telling his legal guardian. After destroying the League of Shadows, more or less, I mean, you know, as much as he could, he blew the place up. Bruce contacts Alfred and says, hey, I'm going to save Gotham. Can you come pick me up? And he's like, Bruce, you're still alive. And, you know, he comes with a really fancy jet. At first, Alfred is very supportive of Bruce, though, helping him buy parts for the Batsuit under different dummy corporations so he can't be traced along with warning Bruce, hey, some parts of this suit are kind of defective. Like taking a crowbar on the mask, you want to avoid stuff like this. So, I mean, that, that was pretty funny. Later in the film, when he sees Batman's exploits on TV, Alfred isn't quite as uh, compassionate toward the vigilante. He thinks Bruce is turning into a monster. During Bruce's birthday party, Alfred and Bruce have this massive argument about his family's legacy. You know, saying those are Bruce Wayne's guests and blah, blah, blah. And Bruce is like, no. I need to get back to Gotham and do this. And I did what I did because Rachel's in the Batcave and she was dying. So take her home, Alfred. Just take her home. You know, do what I tell you. And Alfred's like, fine. So he takes Rachel home. And while Alfred is coming back from, you know, Miss Dawes' home, Roz actually crashes the party and burns Wayne Manor to the ground. Alfred rushes in like a fireman and saves Bruce, although it doesn't really save him. He's like, what's the point of all these push-ups if you can't lift a bloody log? And then Bruce, you know, pushes the log off and Alfred kind of uh, helps Bruce escape to the Batcave as the manor falls all around them. As uh, Bruce Wayne is kind of like, what have I done? I've destroyed my dad's house. Alfred says, the Wayne legacy is more than just bricks or mortar. Why do we fall, sir? So we can learn to pick ourselves up again. 
worst Michael Caine ever, but you get my point. In The Dark Knight, after watching uh, Batman's career grow and him facing all types of weird new characters like the Joker, Batman's like, how am I supposed to deal with a guy like this? You know, he's just like anarchy incarnate. And Alfred's like, some men can't be reasoned with. They just want to watch the world burn. After Rachel dies, Alfred burns a Dear John letter from her so that Bruce doesn't learn the truth because it will affect him in some way. So he's like, I can't let Mr. Wayne find this, so I'm going to burn it. And that's what he does. After uh, Batman defeats Two-Face and retires as a villain, and the Dark Knight rises, he becomes kind of recluse, living in the manor with just Alfred, and he's like uh, sealed up most of the stuff in the house, so it's like a ghost living there. Alfred eventually leaves him, saying he's buried enough members of the Wayne family and thinks that if Batman comes out of retirement, he's going to lose. Not knowing that, of course, it would be the last time they spoke, they exchange some not nice words between each other. It's kind of like a father and son arguing over what type of job the uh, son is going to have, and, you know, he's upset at the dad for not being very supportive. Before leaving the manor for good, Alfred tells Bruce a story of what he actually did in the seven years when Batman was away. He went to a cafe in France and used to daydream that Bruce would one day be there with his wife and kids and be happy. That's all he wants for, you know, his son. Be happy. Of course, they wouldn't say anything to one another. They would just acknowledge one another with a polite nod or, hey, how are you doing? You come to this place often? You know, that type of thing. And Alfred, just in knowing that, he would be happy and be like, you know what? Bruce is going to be okay. I did a good job raising him. I didn't raise him to be this crazy vigilante jumping on rooftops. I raised him to be a good man, and that's what I did. Job well done. I'm going on vacation. As you know, in the story, he isn't there to help Bruce during Dark Knight Rises after Bane breaks him. Uh, Batman is sent to some type of, like, prison in the Himalayas or something. Had Alfred not said those things about Rachel also, it's possible that Bruce wouldn't have lost his confidence. And he might not have fallen to Bane. I mean, he literally had his confidence broken by Alfred before Alfred left. But Alfred, of course, didn't want Bruce to continue being Batman because it was destroying his life. After the events of Dark Knight Rises and uh, Batman saves Gotham, during the funeral for Bruce, Alfred breaks down saying he failed him. And then he basically inherits the entire Wayne fortune and then sells most of it off and even the manor itself to a group of orphans in Gotham. At the very end of the film, Alfred is seen in the cafe in Paris, the one that he talked about prior, and he sees Bruce and Selina together. And just like what he said he was going to do, they both acknowledge one another, and that's the end of the movie. Now, some folks like to think that Alfred is seeing things, but both uh, Christopher Nolan and uh, Christian Bale and Michael Caine have said, no, the movie has a happy ending. It's not an Inception ending. The film points to two key factors. Batman died and Bruce Wayne lived. The autopilot was fixed, which Lucius Fox says. His mom's pearls are on Selina, and even in the film they say, well, these type of pearls just can't go missing. So, yeah, there you go. Bruce and Selina use the new ID cards to start a new life, of course. And, uh, you know, most people's argument is about what Roz used to say. The world is too small for someone like Bruce Wayne to just disappear. And they might be right, and maybe Chris Nolan missed that, but it's a happy ending, which... As a Batman fan, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, that can kind of work, but at the same time, it's like Batman's war is never over. Doesn't get a vacation, because crime doesn't take a holiday. Now, in 2016, we will get to see what the new Alfred brings to the table, and with that, thus ends another Arkham Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. In the comments section below, tell me what you want to learn about next week, and I'll do my best to make it happen. Well, until we meet again, gamers, God bless, and happy gaming. Be seeing ya, and have a fantastic 2015.